Hi, welcome back. And today I'm going to uh, offer you what I'm going to call a creative showcase. And what that is, is each month I'm going to take you through one of my paintings and my thought process behind it, how it came to life for me, um, a little behind the scenes on my creative process, and really how my spiritual life, how my alignment to the divine and my true self guides this work and does what I know to be um, embeds vibrational healing in my art. So, um, <laughs> I'm looking at my dog. He's outside, which is great laying in the sun. So today though, I want to talk about, um, my first, uh, I'm going to call it my breakthrough piece. And this was the piece that, um, really got me started and really brought out my, uh, <laughs> my artistic person who was inside hiding there all along. Um, so this is called light of healing. And what you're looking at here is a, um, it is a limited edition print It's printed on beautiful arches, uh, arches, water paper. Um, I've only printed 10 of these. And the original is in a home of a lovely couple in Georgia. And, um, they purchased her in, uh, March, I think of 2023. Yeah. And she was, she's really big. Uh, and, um, I'll put the dimensions below in the description. I can't remember, but she was the largest and remains the largest painting that I've ever painted. And I painted her as a result of a course uh, that I was going through online. Um, and it was all about finding uh, your true self through art. And, um, this, this painting was a spiritual experience for me and took place over a period of seven weeks time of, um, I painted her in September of 2022 and, um, wow, it took a lot out of me. And I remember when I started painting her, um, I started with all of these, these purples underneath and then built up uh, different layers depending on the prompt or the meditation. So every session I would start with a meditation and a prayer. Uh, I closed down my studio for that entire period of time and I would pray and then I would see the next or I would intuit the next figure, the next form that needed to go on to the canvas. And, um, the thing that started first, I don't know if you, you might not be able to see it through this, but there's three women, there's three women's bodies who were here. The third one is completely covered up, but I started with, um, all, uh, color on the canvas, purples and blues and so forth. And then, um, painted three figures. I kept seeing three women, um, figures, sort of intertwined in this one space. And then I saw a figure in my mind of, of a face and a woman who, who went over all of that as the overarching uh, woman presence representing all of these um, other bodies. And I really feel like this was a painting of me. Um, this was my sacred storyscape. Uh, this was my becoming and it remains that way. So, um, actually selling it was hard, but only in the sense that, you know, I missed her, but I knew that she was ready to be sold, uh, when I was ready to let her go. Because one of my tenets of, of knowing, of uh, faith when I'm painting is that my paintings are meant to be seen and out in the world and shared. And I know that if we, if we hold on to that energy and we don't allow it to flow out into the world as it's meant to be allowed, it will get stuck. And I think with stuck energy, it can calcify or toxify. And when, um, the woman who bought the painting came in and saw her and she knew immediately, and she just sat down and she saw light of healing and, um, knew that it was for her and I could tell that it was for her. So it's like allowing your painting to go into a good home. Um, they say that you're not supposed to get attached to your creations and I'm working through that still. Um, but for me, the energetic healing that is in each of the paintings that I bring forth 
it's a birthing process and whoever receives the creation um, is meant to. And I can feel it uh, when somebody's meant to receive what it is that I have created because it was meant for them. Uh, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine said, when I first started on my painting journey, one of the things and one of the ways I could start off my paintings with was, God, who, who is this painting going to be for? You know, for who am I creating this specific painting? And, and the fun part is, is I don't know. You know, I don't know. Um, back to her. One of the things that I was doing earlier when I would paint is I would, I would take a photo of my painting and I would take it home and I would ruminate on, you know, are the proportions correct or how is she looking? Um, and I would sit and my husband would say, what are you doing? Stop staring at, at the picture. Because I mean, at the end of the day, I wasn't there. There's nothing that I could do about it. And I had to leave the painting back at the, at the, um, at the studio. With this one specifically, I remember I had painted, um, I had painted, had begun to paint all of the things around her. And she was getting smaller and smaller and dare I say uglier and uglier and she was basically disappearing um, she was disappearing she was disappearing and I heard quite clearly um, I woke up that was one of the mornings that I woke up at 3 a.m. and I heard quite clearly uh, you're not paying attention to me you're not paying attention to me you need to bring me back and that's when I knew there was a flash of insight that as it shows up in my real life, it was easier to, to paint the tomato. It was easier to paint the flowers. It was easier to work on the mountains. It was easier to work on the flames, to work on the hand, uh, to do all of these things rather than pay attention to the main uh, character, if you will, which of course was me. Um, sometimes it's easier to go around and check things off the to-do list or clean the house or, or do any number of things that we want to do just to get something done and neglect uh, the thing that we really need to pay attention to. The one that we really need to pay attention to is ourselves. And she was crying out for that and it was showing up. It was showing up. So that, that morning that I woke up really early, I got into the studio probably around six, I closed the curtains and I dedicated that day to bringing her back. And she came back and I brought her shoulders back and her neck, her neck had disappeared. Her shoulder was not even in evidence. It, it, you know, her eyes were getting closer together. It was pretty horrible. Um, I think I've destroyed those pictures, but I brought her back. I spent the day dedicated to her and uh, yeah, and here she is now. And uh, this is how I find that my process rolls out. It's really often reflective of what's going on in my life. Um, so, and here she is. I hope you enjoyed the story of how <laughs> my personal journey is I created Light of Healing. See you next time. <laughs>